All right, I got this golf cart here. We use this thing as like a tire shuttle and runs around the shop, does all kinds of stuff, but it came from uh, another company that, uh, well, it was worked hard, worked very hard. So very, very rusty. And uh, this, uh, this is the, the differential where the electric motor bolts on. This is an electric model, by the way. And uh, this is the input shaft here. However, you can see I've cut a notch in there because uh, what's happened is the input shaft splines onto the um, armature of the electric motor, which I'll show you in a minute. And the splines completely stripped out. And then there was a repair performed where somebody had just drilled a hole and put a bolt in there to kind of keep the, those two from slipping on each other, but uh, that only lasted for so long. So uh, rather than replacing the motor, which was about six or $700 for a cheapest motor we could find, we're just gonna kind of do this uh, repair. and Hopefully it uh, works pretty well. So um, like I said, we've cut a slit in, in here and then uh, we're just taking a piece of plate steel and uh, cut it and we'll go over and look at this. Uh, this motor here. So this is the uh, armature here. You can see that piece that I've put in there and just sort of welded it in. Um, and yeah, the uh, input shaft just slips in there. I'm gonna put a bunch of JB weld in there and it's just gonna get JB welded together basically and hopefully, uh, hopefully it lasts for a while. So right now you can see we have four mounting bolts and really uh, it only utilizes three because the other one's non-accessible the way uh, the case is designed. But um, we'll go back to the case in a minute. There's a couple fractures on the two mounting bolts. This thing was only bolted in with two bolts and they're both fractured. So I'd rather not the case break. I don't want that. So I'm gonna drill some uh, three more additional holes on top of the three original bolt holes that we can use. You can see I've just cut up a piece of cardboard here to protect the internals of the motor. We don't want any metal filings or anything like that. Um, I could disassemble it again and just get the outer shell of this off and then drill it, which would be nice for cleaning afterwards, but I don't want to have to take it all apart again. So I just cut out some cardboard and stick that down and then uh, put a bunch of tape around there and then go ahead and drill three holes. I've already marked them. Uh, the reason that it's all together, like I say, I put it all together and uh, I've already bolted it back onto the housing to make sure everything works, everything lines up, it's all good. And then I went ahead with my center punch while it was in there. There's already holes that are in the casing that are not used possibly for another application, I don't know. But uh, that's where I punch my uh, three holes, uh, center marks. So um, yeah, you can see these are, this hole, this hole, and this hole are the three um bolts that would originally hold it in but then we also have these here i'm guessing it's maybe to clock the motor in a different orientation for whatever reason um <clears throat> so basically i'm going to prep that thing drill some holes and uh then it'll be really secured because like i say there's a fracture in this here there's one right across here and then also on the top as well uh it's very small but you can see it and uh, like I say, if this, if this case breaks, then it's game over. Then we have to buy one. And basically I was told that if we have to put a large amount of money into this thing, we're just gonna get rid of it. So I enjoy driving the thing, it comes in handy. But uh, one other thing I wanted to show you was um, these drums, this is kind of interesting. So the shafts that run through the axle tube on the inside that drive the diff, are off of the diff. Um, they're a spline shaft that gets splined to these brake drums. And the brake drums, uh, the wheels bolt onto the brake drums and uh, drive your wheels. So when I took this, these off, um, this, the other side actually was very difficult to get off. I've swapped the drums. And I'm trying to get this drum off to show you, but the splines on the inside of this drum, I couldn't believe it. They had actually ripped off and they were stuck in the splines on the shaft on the other side. And uh, I've just never seen that before. You can see there's absolutely no splines on the inside of that. See if you can uh, look under there. 
nothing whatsoever. And then there's just a little bit, there's a, a very, very small, small layer of splines just on the outside. So I'm surprised that that was holding on. It must've just been rusted on there because if all those splines are stripped, the, like the, the shaft would be spinning, but this would just say stationary. So somehow uh, it survived this long, but uh, obviously we're gonna be doing drums on it as well. I've got new brakes and hardware and uh, you can see all the oil and stuff that's been getting in here, just contaminating all the brakes. Um, this, there's uh, bearings and axle seals, very, very cheap that you can get on Amazon. I got all the uh, stuff, I think it was like 35 bucks for the bearings and seals in the kit. And uh, these are like 54 bucks each Canadian. So pretty cheap stuff, really. Um, when we disassembled the motor originally to, to uh, inspect it and see what was wrong and what we needed to do to fix it, um, of course the motor, all the components were very, very seized. Everything was rusty and we could not get the speed sensor out, which sits in the end of the motor, um, actually on the underside while it's sitting over there. But uh, this was so rusted in there. There was a snap ring that holds it in. Luckily we were able to uh, get that free without it breaking and get that out and clean it up. But this was so stuck in there, it broke, of course. So I had to get a new one of those. Uh, I think it was like 14 bucks or something. It was cheap stuff, right? So it was all right if we spend uh, you know, 150 bucks on a bunch of pieces. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, head over there and drill some holes, get that thing prepped up and, uh, and get the JB Weld on and get it installed.